to discuss about the procedures because our syllabus is completed and now we are going to start our procedures related to child health nursing. The first one is newborn examination. What is that definition? It is systematic examination of newborn. It includes physical as well as neurological examination. Physical examination we have done to assess the body of the child and neurological assessment we have done with the help of reflexes. With the help of reflexes we know about the condition of the neurological system of the child. Okay? The main objectives of newborn examination are to provide an assessment of infant's state of development of well-being. Then the second one to detect any deviation from normal or to assess the progress of the child. This examination, newborn examination help, help us a lot to know about the health condition or to know about the nervous system condition of the child. So the indication of the examination, uh, usually we have uh, done the physical examination, neurological examination to all the child who are born at hospital but some indications are there. First examination done, a detailed one in labor room within two hours of birth. First examination done in the labor room, then second examination before discharge from the hospital, then the third examination after six to eight weeks of neonatal life. Then terminology, small for gestational age, SGA, what does it mean? It means is less than 10% for weight at the time of birth. Large for gestational age is more than 90% of weight at the time of birth. Then what is the appropriate for gestational age is the birth weight between 10 to 90%. Right? Then full term, if the baby born between 37 to 42 weeks or 259 to 294 days, it is the full term. Then preterm after 28 weeks and before 37 weeks. Then post term after 42 weeks. Right? Then what kind of articles we have to require for the physical examination of the child? First one, GPR tray to assess the vital sign of the child. A tray containing hand washing articles, apron, stethoscope, inch tape, torch, bubble containing cotton, cotton vest, weighing machine, bubble with extra cotton, Macintosh, kidney tray and paper bag to, to destroy or to dispose the used cotton. Then, initial assessment of newborn. First one is identification. Check and identify the sex of the infant and verify the records with the correct name, gender and registration number so that we can identify the child we are going to assess. It is the right one or not. Gestational age, full term, pre-term, post-term. Okay. Then, Apogar score, it is a very essential one in the assessment. Apogar score discovered by Dr. Virginia Apogar in the year 1952. The Apogar score is done twice following the birth of the newborn. It is done, first time it done at the at one minute of birth and second time it done on fifth. Five minutes after birth. This test is a very useful assessment. Below is a sample of the chart used for Apogar scoring of the new need. There are five components like heart rate, breathing, reflexes, muscle tone, and color. And according to that, the scoring divided into three, zero, one, and two. The maximum score is ten, and minimum is zero. If heart rate is absent, then we give zero score to the child. If heart rate, heart rate is less than less than 100, then 1, then more than 100, 2. Same like in breathing, if absent, 0, irregular, weak, 1, and a strong right, 2. 
reflexes if f sent 0 gram is weak cry to stimulation 1 and cry is pulls away to stimulation we provide 2 point then muscle tone if f sent 0 limited movement of extremities 1 and 2 given give to the child to have moves all extremities spawned uh, and the sleep. Then color, if pale or blue, we provide a zero score. If extremity is blue but body pink, mm -hmm. then we give one point. If body pink and extremity pink two, then we give two point. Okay. The Apogar score is assessed in five parts, as you know. And a score of 8 to 10 is normal, a score of 5 to 7 fairly low, mild respiration, neurological distress should be considered. A score of less than 5 may indicate neonatal resuscitation to revive the child early conditions. Then vital signs. Check the vital signs in the following order. First one, respiration. The normal value of respiration is 40 to 60 breaths per minute. The heart rate, normal value of a heart rate is 122, 140 beats per minute. Temperature, normal value 36.5 to 37.5 degree Celsius. After that, physical examination. First one is length. Crown to heel length with infant spine, upside down with the knee slightly press down to obtain maximum leg extension. The normal length is 47 to 50 centimeter. Then head circumference. It is measured with a tape, measuring tape drawn across the center of the forehead and the most prominent portion of the posterior head. And the normal range of head circumference is 33 to 35 centimeter. After that, the chest circumference. It is measured at the level of nipples and is about 2 cm less than heart circumference. The normal range is 30 to 33 cm. Then the weight. The normal weight is 2.5 to 3.5 kg. Right? Then posture and movements. Supine position with partial flexion of arms, legs and hand firmly turned a little to one side, hip joints are partially abducted. Movement is most evident in face and limbs, unusual movement or lack of movements and asymmetry should be noted and reported. Then, the next is skin. The color, most term newborns have a ruddy complexion. Because of the increased concentration of red blood cells in the blood vessels and it decreases in the amount of subcutaneous fat, this rudiness fades slightly over the one or first month of the age of the newborn. Then cyanosis. There are cyanosis is also divided into two, peripheral or central. Peripheral related to extremities. Peripheral cyanosis appear due to immature peripheral circulation. This is a normal phenomenon in the first 24 to 48 hours after birth. Then central cyanosis indicates decreased oxygenation. It may be the result of temporary respiratory obstruction or an underlying disease. Then neonatal evaluation and here vernix cisosa. It is a white cream cheese-like substance that serves as a lubricant is secreted by the fetal subcutaneous glands and <coughs> which are disappears within a few days. Then lanigo is the fine downy hair that covers a newborn's shoulder, back and upper arms. It may be found also on the forehead and ears. Preterm newborns has more lanigo than postterm. After that, desquemation. Uh, Peeling of the skin takes place few days after birth and most marked on the hands and feet. It is very clear in image. Then, milia. Newborn subcutaneous glands are immature, therefore, pinpoint white papule can be found on the cheek or across the bridge of the nose of newborn. It disappears by 2 to 4 weeks of age of the newborn. Then, erythema toxicum. It begins as a papule 
increasing in severity to become erythema by the second day and then disappearing by the third day. Then forceps mark. If forceps were used for birth during delivery, there may be circular or linear contusion matching the rim of the blade of the forceps on the infant cheek. This mark disappears in one to two days along with the edema that accompanies it. Then skin turgor. It is, if a fold of skin is grasped between the thumb and fingers, it should feel elastic. When it is released, it should fall back to form a smooth surface. If severe dehydration is present, the skin will not smooth out again and will remain in an elevated range. Then, Mongolian spore. Slate gray to blue-black region usually over lumbosacral area and buttocks accumulation of melanocytes within the dermis generally fade by the age of 7 years. Then head. A newborn's head appears disappropriately large because it is one-fourth of the total length. Fontanelles. The anterior fontanel will be felt as a soft spot. The posterior fontanel is so small that it cannot be palpated readily. Okay. The anterior fontanel disappear at the age of 18 months and posterior fontanel disappear at the age of 6 weeks. Then, sutures. Suture line should never appear widely separated in newborns. Separation denotes increased intracranial pressure from either abnormal brain formation, abnormal accumulation of CSF in the cranium. In case of hydrocephalus, there is an increased intracranial pressure or an accumulation of blood from a birth injury. Then, fused suture line also are abnormal and need to be confirmed with X-ray and further evaluation or investigation. Capered succedinum. What is that? The head size is abnormally large. Why? Because of swelling or edema of the presenting portion of the scalp goes away few days. It goes away few days. Then capet succedinum. Uh, then cephalohabitoma. Bleeding between the skull and periosteum of newborn baby secondary to suture of blood vessel crossing the periosteum. It does not cross the suture line. It disappears by weeks and it can be taken months also. Then eyes. Newborns usually cry tearlessly because of the leporima. Ducts are not fully mature until about 3 months of age. Eyes should appear clear without any redness or purulent discharge. We should observe for subconjunctual hemorrhage, ophthalmia uh, union trauma. Then ears, the level of the top part of the external ear should be on a line drawn from the inner canthus to the outer canthus of the eye and back across the side of the head. Ear cartilage, pinna fame, cartilage fat along with the edge and ear recoil, instant recoil. In the image you can clearly see the normal ear and the abnormal angled ear then low seated ear. Mouth. Mouth should be observed for cleft lip, cleft palate and tongue tie. The palate of newborn should be intact. Occasionally one or two small round glistening well, circums well circumscribed cysts are present on the palate a result of the extra load of calcium that was deposited in utero. Then after that sometimes in some newborns one or two natal teeth may be erupted. Then after that neck. The neck of newborn is short, often chubby and decreased, decreased with skin fold. Head should rotate freely on it. Then chest. It looks small because the infant's head is large in proportion. Possible breast engorgement with possible secretion of thin watery fluid popularly termed witch milk. And it uh, which will mostly appear in girl child because of the hormonal effect of the mother. Then absence of retraction. <clears throat> after that abdomen, bowel sounds present within an hour after birth, edge of the liver, 
usually palpable and 1 to 2 cm below the right costal margin. Edge of the supreme usually palpable at 1 to 2 cm below the left costal margin. Then umbilical cord. It has two arteries and one vein. If it uh, possesses two arteries and one vein, it is normal. Then if any, because of any reason, the artery is less or absent, then there is a big issue in the future. At birth, cord appears bluish white and moist. After clamping, it began dry and appears a dull yellowish brown and sheds after 6 to 10 days. Then, if presence of one artery, usually the two arteries and one vein are there. If one vein and one artery present, then what kind of things happen with the child related to vertebral, anorectal, cardiac, tracheoesophageal, and renal, limbic. These kind of abnormalities and uh, the abnormalities in these particular areas may be developed due to only one arteries. Normally, the two arteries and one vein should be there in the umbilical cord. After that, back. The spine of newborn typically appears flat in the lumbar and sacral areas. The base of the spine should be free of any pinpoint openings, dimpling or sinus tracts in the skin which would suggest a dermal sinus of spina bifida or occulta, lumbar hair, tuft and hem and uh, hymen, uh, hymen guma. Okay. Then endogenital area, the anus of newborn must be inspected to be certain that is present patient and not covered by a membrane. Male genitalia sacrotum is pendulous and both the testes are present in the scrotum. Males with one or both undescended testes needs further evaluation or investigation. Then female genitalia in female newborns, Libia majora fully covers Libia minora. Then some newborns have a mucous vaginal secretion, which is sometimes blood tinged called pseudo, pseudo menstruation. It is also appeared due to the hormonal effect of the mother. This discharge disappears as soon as the infant system has cleared the hormones. Extremities we should observe for syndictile or polydictile. Polydictile means when the fingers more than the normal. Okay, the number of the fingers more than the normal. Polydictile, syndictile, when the fingers are fused together. This is known as syndictile. Then simian, simian crease. The normally only uh, normally crease, uh, two creases are present. If one crease is present, then the child may be suffering from the Down syndrome. Unusual curvature of the little finger and a simian crease. A single palmar crease are signs of Down syndrome. Then soles. A full-term newborn have creases covering the entire sole of the foot. Post-mature infants have deep creases over the foot. A premature infant sole crease may partially cover the upper two-third or may be absent. Then meconium. Meconium, it is the first fecal material, is a sticky, odorless material, greenish-black, to brownish green which is passed from 8 to 24 hours after birth. Then urine, the first urine is diluted because of immaturity of the kidney and lack of ability to concentrate urine. I hope you have clear with the physical assessment of the child. In next lecture, we have to cover the neurological assessment. Thank you very much.